Welcome to Hustle and Pro. We have a fun episode for you today. So not only is Tanner Tessman another FC Dallas homegrown that we're going to brag about, he's a fellow podcaster too, so I'm sure he'll entertain us today. Hi, Tanner. Hello. How are y'all doing? Doing I'm great. On. Yeah, I'm glad to have you on. Um, so I've talked to you before, but I'm ready for our audience to hear about your story. It's pretty fun. So first, I have some quick hits. I want to know who's your favorite athlete of all time. Oh, my favorite athlete of all time. That's tough. I would probably go with um, Ronaldinho. He's a soccer player. Yeah. But I've been watching some uh, Formula One on Netflix, and Lewis Hamilton might be my guy. So Lewis Hamilton or Ronaldinho, probably my Watch favorite. Watch that, that drive, to, drive to Succeed or whatever, that Netflix. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So good. So yeah. good. Yeah, he's pretty amazing. Yes, Ronaldinho is one of those soccer guys you can just watch forever. It's his – yeah. skills with the ball at his feet what about favorite sports movies favorite sports movies um definitely remember the titans is one and then uh, miracle i love miracle the story and the background so th those are probably my two favorite maybe um what's that one about uh oh rudy i like rudy yeah, yeah. but then obviously yeah, like rocky rocky is my all-time favorite movie series but yeah. it's more of like boxing so but yeah I like Rudy too but it's been ruined for me over the years hearing people talk about it how it's not like as kind of true and accurate as the movie makes it look so man. yeah but but yeah. I know I like it it's a good story all right what about superstitions do you have any game day superstitions or routines that you've got to do well I have an everyday uh superstition I have to, no matter what it is I have to put my left foot in it first so like if I'm putting on shoes it has to be my left foot goes in the shoe first and then my right foot. And then when I take off my shoes, I have to take off my right shoe first and then take off my left shoe. It goes with socks as well. I have to put my left sock on first and then my right sock. That's just how it is. I don't know why, but that's pretty much it. I don't really have any, any superstitions. If I don't do something, then something bad's going to happen, but that's yeah. pretty much it. Just the, the kind of random left foot first thing. Yes. Left Are you foot left always footed? goes first. Are you left -footed? No, I'm right footed. I'm right footed. Hmm. All right. Yeah, it's a weird one. It is a little weird. No, that's good. I mean, it's like a habit. <laughs> you just have to, like, you, once you're in it, you don't want to break it, I guess, huh? Exactly. Exactly. Okay, so I um, always love on this show learning about the history of athletes and, like, if they were multi-sport athletes. So if I'm talking to a high school kid that's committed to play somewhere in college, I like knowing, like, how many sports they played and how far into their life did they play them. And, of course, with pro athletes, it's even more fascinating to learn that. Um, with you, it's a little bit kind of not necessary because you are definitely a multi-sport multi athlete up until like a second ago. So um, can you tell me that football story and history and um, kind of the story about Clemson? Well, yeah. So I've been playing a bunch of sports ever since I was little. Always the main three were soccer, basketball, and football. I had a little bit of tennis, um, other sports here and there, but those were the main three. And um I, I really – my two favorite sports are basketball and soccer. Those are my true loves. Football, I never really got into as much, I could say. I uh, just didn't really like it as much. But uh, so I, I played football all the way until eighth grade. And then uh, in, in ninth grade, I moved here to um, Frisco and started playing um, for FC Dallas's academy. So I, I couldn't play basketball anymore, and I couldn't play football either because here at FC Dallas's academy, you can only play once. You have to focus on soccer, and that, that's just how it is. You, it takes up so much of your time, mornings, afternoons, games, everything. So you really don't have time to do anything else. But mm -hmm. so when I moved here, I, I was solely focusing on uh, soccer. And then um, then I kind of got started in recruiting of, um, of colleges. And a bunch of colleges wanted me or whatever. And, and Clemson had always been on my radar because I grew up going to Clemson uh, with my connection with Dabo Sweeney. Um, I, I grew up going to games, going there on holidays uh, with him and things like that. So Clemson was always in my heart. But uh, at the time, I was really open to any any school to go play for. But just then uh, playing, Clemson, playing soccer. Yeah, just playing soccer. I, no other school had uh, any other sports or anything like that. But I made jokes uh, to I went on a visit to UNC, North Carolina. And I was like, look, if I come here, I'm playing basketball, too. But it was just a joke. Like, I would never actually do it. But I would probably go try out. But I was basketball was really my true love uh, besides soccer. I love basketball. I still do. But, um, but then Clemson uh, started recruiting me and started talking with uh, my uncle Dabo and, and it was, it, it became a possibility because I can't, I went to a, I went to up to Clemson one uh, break. I had a weekend and the, the team was practicing and, and I got out on the field just with me and a couple of my friends that are on the team. And I started hitting some field goals and, and it really came true to me and Dabo and, and my family that 
I could actually do this. Like it, like I, I never had practice since the eighth grade and uh, it was still natural to me. So I was, I was kicking in eighth grade or that yeah, I was, I was kicking in eighth grade. I was a wide receiver in eighth grade and I was a safety in eighth grade. And before that I played a whole bunch of positions, but those were the best positions. I was at wide receiver and safety were probably my best. And then obviously kicker, but um, yeah. So then he saw me kick uh, when I was at Clemson and then I came to a camp and then we kind of started talking with, I, I, I committed to Clemson, but yeah. then after I committed, we kind of had to talk with uh, Coach Noonan and Dabo about the logistics of it and, and how it was going to work because it's, it's, it's tough to, to handle with uh, two sports that are in the same season as well as academics. So, but we, we sorted it out and, and we had everything uh, set to go. And then FC Dallas obviously came up. So, but that's pretty much the rundown. Yeah. How long did you have to consider signing your pro contract with FC Dallas versus staying in at Clemson and playing two sports? Yeah. So he, I was, it was a really short uh, time frame that I had to decide, but it was only short because I made it short. I could have, mm-hmm. I could have kept uh, prolonging the decision and um, they gave me as much time as I wanted FC Dallas. It, w- it wasn't a rush. Uh, Clemson, obviously they, they were going to take me. And so, um, but no, after they offered, it was kind of like a, like, what am I doing moment? Like, this is what I, I moved for four years. Right. Like, this is what I'm doing. Like, this is what it's all been working towards. And it kind of just take a, I had to take a step back from the, the, the small picture and look at the big picture of what I've been doing. So it, it was, it was maybe a couple of days that I had to decide down in, uh, in Florida. My family came to Florida, uh, in the preseason trip when we went to Tampa and, uh, it was two or three days that we decided. And then we told Lucci. So then we moved forward. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Okay. So speaking of Lucci, so something I want to talk about is like your physical, your physicality. You have definitely brought some size to FC Dallas. Um, so in the first home game, um, home the season home opener, I mistook you a few times out there for Ryan. Um, <laughs> we weren't, you know, we weren't used to seeing you out there yet playing. And so yeah. and some of the people sitting around us were saying the same thing. So I'm a season ticket holder, just FYI. Um, yeah. And so talking to people, they were like, man, that's, you know, who's this new kid that looks like a, a grown man out there with Ryan and Matt back there. So tell me about how your size, um, you know, kind of jives with this first team and how Lucci's going to take advantage of that. Yeah, for sure. I think for me, having size is such an advantage for me, especially as a young player, because you see other players like uh, that a bunch of homegrowns that we have that, m- that may not have that size aspect, but they definitely have the, the technical ability and the, and everything else. But it just, the, just the size in the MLS is, is kind of tough. So I think for me, that really plays in my strengths, being able to just hop out there and, um, be able to play with those guys that are in the MLS and not be scared to go in tackles and things like that, especially in the midfield. But I think I can dominate the midfield in any, in any um, league with my, with my size and ability. So uh, just the belief that Lucci had in me to play me really let me showcase that ability. But that's something that I've been working on uh, trying to stay strong. Cause once, once you grow like that, it was a, it was a quick growth spurt. And then I was really skinny and uh, lanky. So after, after a while I had to start getting in the gym started getting bigger. So now I'm, I'm stronger and I think it really helps. Uh, I think like you said, you can see it. Um, mistake me for Ryan. He's a big guy. So. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, when was your growth spurt? I grew in the ninth grade summer, eighth grade summer, I guess, kind of, yeah. but yeah, I just, I just shot up when I moved to Dallas, I was a uh, very tall and I was growing when I moved here. So. So are you playing on the outside? Is that? No, I play. What do you mean? Like, are you an outside midfielder? Or a- no, I play uh, like six, eight uh, midfield, like center mid. Okay. But uh, when I'm when I played in the academy, I played every position, but uh, right back and left back. So okay, I've only gotten to see a few times yet. So this season, so yeah. haven't yeah. gotten it uh, in my brain yet what that starting eleven looks like. But um, okay, so I also want to talk to you about faith and family. So I can tell just from the little bit that I have seen of you already that um, it play, faith and family play a big role in shaping your life. So it, is, that, is that accurate? Oh, 100%, yeah. So tell me about that, like your, your family support. And like you said, you guys made the decision as a family to move to Frisco a few years back. And so tell me about that and um, how the faith plays into your, your life. Well, yeah, I mean, faith is the biggest thing. It's my foundation. It's what I do, everything based off of. of and um, I try to just... Um, show the glory that, that God's given me and the blessings that he's given me uh, to relate it on to people that uh, might not know him. So that's the biggest thing. And just to try and inspire people through him is my goal as a person. And, and uh, it's something that I really believe in strongly, but my family is also 
help me with that belief and they've taught me and raised me the right way I believe and um they definitely sacrifice a lot for me and they're they're huge supporters uh, I have a bunch of family they 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 share on all my my goals and um things I've done to other uh their friends and family so my support my support behind me is 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 massive uh, it's a bunch of people that all believe in me and they want what's best for me so uh, even just a couple weeks ago they were on a on a, a cruise ship Dabo had a um his 50th birthday and uh, they went down to the islands on this uh, private boat and there's about 40 people in my my parents bought uh, we were supposed to play New York that's when we got canceled or whatever but we were supposed to play New York on that Saturday in New York and uh, my dad had brought hats for everyone to wear FC Dallas hats so he brought like 40 FC Dallas hats so that just shows the support that they have for me and what they're willing to do to to get people on my team so I, I it's all it's a glory to them and God that, uh, that really helps me where I am today. So that's awesome. Do you have brothers and sisters? I have an older sister. Yep. She an she's, athlete? Uh, she, uh, she used to play soccer and, uh, but right now she's at, she goes to college at Belmont in Tennessee and, uh, she plays the guitar. She's really into music. She's oh. unbelievable on the guitar. Uh, she's, she, she's in a band. Um, she, she does a lot of gigs, but now since the coronavirus, she's, she hasn't been able to do much, but yeah, she's, she's amazing on the guitar. Wow. Okay, I'm curious about the prayer circle. So after games, before you guys leave the field, um, so how does that work? Does anybody just jump in, or is this something you guys talk about beforehand, or who gets to go? Like, because I know that there's like um, a guy, right? I don't know if he's like a, officially a chaplain or what, but um, he kind of waits on everybody. Maybe even if you're doing like interviews, like Reggie's usually pulled off to the side or packs in different guys. And you all wait until a certain amount of people are there or certain guys are there. And then there's a prayer said before y'all walk off the field. How's that work out? Yeah. I mean, guys are doing different things, cool down. And, but then other guys need to get their fitness in. So they're running, but we all know as a team, even if you're, if some people aren't religious, that it's a, it's a group thing that we all try to do and uh, just say a quick prayer. Cause at the end of the day, um, we thank God for letting us be able to play and uh, get through the game that if, if we, everyone's safe, we pray about that. But, um, no, it's, it's a blessing to be able to do what we do. And, and we have to thank God for that because uh, any day it could go, it could be gone. So we got to take every moment and uh, keep moving forward. So we just thank him and we hope hoping to keep giving us blessings and move forward. So yeah, it's, but it's, it's tough sometimes because we got people that do interviews and some people forget because you're caught up in the moment, but we all try to remind each other and hold people accountable. So. Yeah. I love it. Do you guys get to, to voice your own thoughts at that time or is it just the leader? It's just the leader. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's cool. I've always thought that's neat. That's where we sit. We sit on that corner flag right there. And so we're all, we always hang out for a while after the game. And so we're always curious about what's going on over there and how that all works. But it's very cool that you guys do that. All right. And so I also want to talk about, talk about your friends. So I have heard you talk about your teammates, your team roommates, when you travel, your locker mates, your former teammates. Um, are most of your closest friends soccer guys? Oh, hundred percent. Yeah. All my, I'd say all my friends are soccer guys. I don't really have any that, uh, that aren't maybe a few back in uh, high school or, or middle school that, uh, that I'm cool with, but right now closest friends, all soccer players for sure. Yeah. So then I talked at the beginning about how you have your own podcast. So your podcast is your soccer friends, right? So it's, it's another, um, well, it's a international player and there's another MLS player. Is that right? it's, uh, he plays in he plays in college. He played at Clemson, and now he transferred to SMU. So, yeah. Oh, he's here. Okay. Yeah, he he just moved back. This will be his next year. Will be his first year at, at SMU. He's still technically in Clemson, but the coronavirus, so he's doing all classes online. Gotcha. And then who's yeah. the other who's the other friend that you do your podcast with? Uh, Johan Gomez. He plays for Portugal, uh, Porto, in Portugal, but uh, he he played at SU Dallas uh, last year. And uh, he played with North Texas with me, and uh, but he moved to to Porto to try to chase his dreams and and start there. But yeah, he's he's on the national team as well with me, the U twenty. So, oh, okay. Yep. So you guys talk about um, everything from girls and tattoos and soccer, lots of soccer and, and different goals and things like that, right? Yeah, that's that's pretty much our our podcast, I guess. But the, the main goal for us was kind of just to to find people's success, but at the same time. Uh, we all miss each other. You know, last year we were really close. Um, we, I mean, we did everything together pretty much worked out. Me and Johan went to personal trainers together. Um, we, we ate lunch together. We went to school together. Uh, we did everything together. We traveled together. We played together. We were together all the time. So kind of this year, 
mentioned that we kind of started a group chat and then it kind of just came about to start a podcast and it's kind of our, our way of staying in touch with each other but at the same time doing some fun that we love to do and and uh, touch other people that, that might need to be touched so that's kind of our goal with our our podcast and what it is so yeah that's cool are you all having fun oh yeah it's so fun yeah. i wish there's some episodes that we wish we could release but i don't think i'd get a lot of like it would just be pointless but they're so funny honestly because yeah. y'all are just going on about nothing or what yeah, we're just talking about nothing, but it's just like, it's just a good, like a good chat, you know, like with, with our best friends, because it's lighthearted and we're just, we're just having a good time. But at the end of the day, like, it wouldn't like, it didn't have a purpose, some of those episodes, but maybe we'll get some in there. Yeah, why not? It's yeah. fun, though. That's why I um, asked to start this one, because I cover all the local sports teams around here for Lifestyle Frisco. And um, it's great. And it was fun interviewing players and coaches and writing articles about them. But it's more fun to just be able to have a conversation. You get, yeah. you get a lot of different information that way. It's just, I like the medium better to be able to just hear it, hear the conversation rather, rather than type it out and read it. I think it's yeah, fun. Yeah, for sure. And it's fun. This podcast is fun. It's called Hustle and Pro because we interview everybody from youth to pro. So I've had a couple of middle school kids on um, and oh, then wow. we work with FISD to get basically kids who've maybe committed or, or just high level athletes at whatever sport. And so um, it's fun talking to, to basketball players and I mean, everybody really, not just soccer. We do a lot of soccer. Soccer is one That's of my good. favorites. So we do a lot of soccer. Um, you Soccer's mentioned basketball. Best. Who's your, who's your basketball team? Who's your NBA team? I don't have a, like an NBA team. I just like to follow players. Uh, Kyrie Irving really touches my heart. He's um, the uncle Drew series is, it's something else. If you haven't seen the Uncle Drew series, you got to go see the Uncle Drew series. But okay. I just – I don't know. Basketball just is a different – I don't know. It's a different thing in my heart, I would say, because I love soccer. It's, it's my true love. But basketball is, is close. I, I really enjoy playing basketball and, and getting out there. I haven't been able to get out there lately. But uh, usually I go in the summer and play a couple pickup games and uh, at the beach we'll play. So hopefully we can do that soon. I'm dating this podcast. But today I think would be national championship game day. I think. Does that sound right? March Madness tournament would be wrapping up. I think so. Yeah. yeah. I think so. I heard that earlier on the ticket. It made me a little sad that that's what today was. Mm -hmm. I got sad last week because it was opening day of baseball. And of course, didn't happen. And so it's wrapping up college basketball season today. Didn't happen. But um, yeah. so who's your college team then? Like, are you, are you still a Clemson guy? Yeah, I'm still a Clemson guy. Or Clemson North all Carolina sports college. Yeah. Probably North Carolina too. No, I don't. I'm, yeah. I'm all Clemson except for soccer. I would say I'm Clemson and UAB, uh, UAB Alabama's team, Birmingham. I got a couple of friends that play for them, so I love to support them. But uh, I'm Clemson all the way, all sports, Clemson. So okay, very good. Okay, one last thing about um, like you mentioned some of your teammates from NTSC, the transition moving over from Eric Quill to Lucci. So was there much of a learning curve to get used to their coaching styles? And personality. The thing is with uh with Lucci, I, I've known Lucci ever since I've been with uh, FC Dallas. Uh, he was the person that brought me to FC Dallas, so I've kind of always known Lucci. For so for him to get the job as head coach, uh, really helped me because yeah. he knows me, and uh, there's not much to he knows me. He's been watching me, so he believes in me. But uh, Eric Quill, he was he's a really cool guy, a uh, great coach. Uh, I love the style of coaching that he does. He he likes to he likes to be active and and uh, he likes to talk to players and, and things like that. So he they're both. Say what? I think I feel like he played at Clemson. He oh, did, yeah. Eric yeah. Cole played at Clemson, and then he went pro, yeah. But uh, yeah, so we connect. Me and Eric connected right off the bat with that, and then also just being cool. But yeah, I think they're both great coaches. And the the transition from Eric Quill to to Lucci Gonzalez is very similar. They're very similar coaches uh, with their styles and the the way they coach. So it was pretty easy, to be honest. Yeah, I think FC Dallas has done a good job of that. Of obviously they've done a good job of their homegrown system because we you know lead the league in that, but um yeah. also just that that kind of handoff from one team to the other and the coaches working mm -hmm. so well and I don't know if you could plan that because it's like happened so much over time with Lucci being in the system the other end of it but maybe yeah. they didn't plan it I don't know but it's, <laughs> it's working out right especially for the players it's making it's making a huge difference in seeing some of these guys come back like guys like Eddie who did go off to school and they're coming back mm -hmm. I mean if that was a different coach set up I don't think that that what he would have come back or or the yeah. coach would have seen him as a viable option to come back yeah I mean I think 
I think just the relationships we build because Eddie stayed in touch with Lucci over those, over those four years. And then, and then he came back. And I think just the relationships we build, they, they're there forever. Even if Eddie didn't come back and later on, if, if Eddie needed something in life that I think Lucci would be there for him. So I just think the relationships we create in the Academy and then in the pro level, I think those are, those are beyond any other club that in the U S that can do that. So. Yeah. I love that. So what's, what's next. You've made the first team for FC Dallas. What are your next goals for yourself? Yeah, I mean, my 2020 goals, the first one was a sign pro. So to kind of start off the year with that was incredible. But uh, my goals now are just to try to become a main guy in the in the 11 at SC Dallas, try to get as much minutes as possible and uh, do what the club needs me to do. And then also uh, get called to the U20 World Cup. Obviously, that's on hold with the coronavirus and the qualifiers and things like that. But um, yeah. we're, I'm in touch with them and hopefully we can uh, get back on the field soon. But that's my goal to to make the U20 World Cup and then my goal is always to win the World Cup. Uh, it's my goal ever since I was a little kid. My dream was to win a World Cup. So uh, to, to win the World Cup would be unreal. But those are my short-term goals right now. So Yeah, you're getting there. Well, best of luck. Keep training and keep the faith. And uh, here's to your next FC Dallas match sometime sooner than later. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you for time to sit down with us. I know everything's weird right now. It's not like everybody's busy outside of their houses, but still it's – it's different that we're not getting to be in the studio, but thanks for jumping on the screen with me so that we could chat. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah. Anytime. I really enjoyed it. 